Hey teachers, now that the inbox has been disabled and students are no longer able to message each other, there might be a time in your class period where you do need them to connect with one another outside of the classroom setting. For example, a group project. So in this video, I wanna show you several different ways you can set this up so that students can still talk with members of their group um, outside of the classroom. So I'm in my Canvas course and I'm gonna come here to discussions. And then I'm going to go ahead and add a discussion. I'm going to call it group discussion, um, a place for you to connect with members of your group. All right. Put whatever you want there. Leave everything as is or as default. Don't change anything, especially this one. We definitely want student names to appear. We don't want anyone typing messages incognito. Come down here, add dates or don't, doesn't matter, uh, whatever your preference is. But the important thing is, is we're gonna say this is a group discussion. So once I do that, um, I can either select a group that I've already created. So I've created one called Space Project already. So I can either select that one or if I haven't created any groups at all, um, it's gonna look like this when I click this button. All right, so in my group set, or in my group, I need to call it a name. So I've already created a space group. So this one I'm gonna call um, Reading Club. I've got different options for how I wanna set this up. If I want students to manually sign themselves up, which is the quickest and easiest way, I'm going to say allow self sign up. And I wanna make sure they're only signing up with other students in their same class period. I'm gonna go ahead and click click that one. If I leave this unclicked, that means a student in period one could be in a group with a student from period six. That might be something you're interested in. I just wanted to explain the difference. I only want my groups to be within the same class period. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. All right, so if they are gonna manually set themselves up, I wanna have some guidance. How many total groups am I going to create? Well. I have six classes and I want five groups per class. So that would be 30, right? So I'm gonna have 30 total groups and I wanna make sure that there is no more than six students per group. Now I'm definitely gonna need to do some math because I need to know how many students I have so that I don't accidentally leave somebody out of a group. So if I do six students in a group and I have 30 groups, but I have like seven extra kids I didn't account for, those seven aren't gonna be able to join a group. So just make sure you've done some math when you set this up. Okay, do I wanna even do leadership? I can leave this whole thing blank. If I do wanna automatically assign you know, a group leader, I can click this and then decide how I want to assign them, or I can leave that blank. I don't need a group leader, especially in this particular situation. I'm just creating a discussion so that they can chat with each other. All right, and then I would say save. If I don't want students manually setting themselves up, I'm gonna uncheck that and instead, I've got three options. I can create the group later, which I will show you, or I can split students by number of groups or split students by group. So let's talk about this one first. Split students by number of groups. So I wanna have 30 groups total. I wanna make sure students are in groups only with students from the same section. And if I hit save, I'm gonna let the computer do the work. It's gonna create 30 groups and it's gonna put all of my students inside of groups, making sure my students are only in groups with other students in the same class period. Now, I don't have to do math on this one because it's gonna automatically put those students in these 30 groups as evenly as possible, so I know no student's gonna be left out. I can always also manually move students later. So if I let the computer do all the work and then I go in and check the groups and see that Johnny and Susie are in the same group and they don't work well together, I can totally make that change. The other option I can do is I can split by uh, students per group. So I wanna make sure no group has more than five students. 
I want those five students to be in the same class period. And then I'll say save. And it will put five students uh, in each group and it'll make as many groups as I need to. So again, this time I don't have to do any math. I'm gonna let the computer figure it out. It'll keep those groups as evenly as possible, as many as possible having five. And again, if I see that Johnny and Susie ended up in a group together, I can always manually swap them out later. My advice is to do this one, okay? You, you know how many students you want in a group, go ahead and do it this way and let the computer do the work for you. And then you just kind of adjust names as needed uh, when it's done. All right, but there is still another option. So the other option was to create a group later. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that one so I can show you how this works and I'll say save. I'll come here and I will save my discussion. Now, as of right now, there's no members in my group. So if you assigned this discussion to your students, they would not be able to do anything because I haven't created the groups yet. So just heads up there. If I had let the computer manually create the groups, then it would work right off the bat. Okay, I'm gonna come here to people. And the first thing I wanna point out is that it is this link is hidden to students. That's totally fine unless you had your students uh, manually creating uh, or manually putting themselves into a group. They would need to be able to access this link in order to sign up for a group. So if you picked option number one and you allowed students to um, put themselves in groups, you need to unhide this for them so they can access it. All right, so I'm gonna click people. My groups are gonna always be up here. So I had already previously created a space project so my, this new one is my reading club and you can have as many groups as you want. So I'm gonna click on reading club. All right, so now I'm gonna kind of go back and forth between a couple of options. <clears throat> if I went with the one where I let the computer automatically create groups, all my groups would be sitting here with students in them by section or by class period. And then I would just be able to move students around manually if I saw certain students shouldn't be with others. It would already be done for me. But I chose to create the group manually myself. And so what I'm gonna see here are all of my students from all of my sections listed alphabetically. So if I have 150 students, I'm gonna see 150 student names here all listed alphabetically. And I have zero groups right now. So I'm gonna come over here to this group and I'm gonna start creating my groups. Now for this purpose, I'm just gonna call them group one, two, three, and four, okay? And then how many students do I want in a group? I only have four students in this class, so it's gonna look a little funny that I only have two students in a group. Although maybe you do have partners, that's fine too. Okay, so obviously you're gonna need a lot more than three groups or, um, Maybe not, I don't know how you're gonna set up your groups. Okay, so with that said, I would come over here and I would just literally drag and drop students into a group, okay? You'll notice that this group is now full because I allowed two students in a group and I have two in there. This, these two groups still have room for one more student. The other thing I can do is I can click this little arrow and it'll show me who is in the groups. So like I said, if you let the computer automatically assign your students to groups by section, this is how you would see it. You would see those names by section. And then if you were like, Arthur and example students should not be in a group together, simply take one of the students and move them to another group. Okay, now you're gonna see these two groups are full and this one, there are no students in that group. So that's my recommendation is that when you create your discussion, Go back there real quick. When you create your discussion and you create a group discussion that you choose number of students per group because you know you only want a certain, you know, max number of students in a group, let the computer do the work for you. Or maybe you don't know exactly how many students you want, but you know you don't want more than, you know, a certain number of groups. Go ahead and do it that way, but let it do the work for you so that when you come here, 
your groups are already made. You won't have to do this part where you type in group names. They'll already be made. Students will already be assigned. And from there, you can move students if you need to. Even if you were wanting to create the groups completely yourself, it's still easier to do that and move students around where you're seeing maybe five groups for section one versus seeing 150 names in alphabetical order over here. So it's still easier. If you're gonna let your students manually sign up, I just wanna point out one more time that they will need to, you will need to unhide this link for them so that they can come here and sign up for a group. I'll show you how students do that um, in a different video. All right, the final thing I wanna show you is that if you come over here to the groups icon, any group that your student is a part of will show up here. So I'm not in as a student right now, so you're not gonna see space, project, or reading club, but they would, whatever group they're a part of, they would see it here and they could simply click on it. You could also just straight up go this route, is create a group and just have them use this for their discussions. So they could come here, they could make announcements to each other. And again, only group members can access this. So, you know, if you only have Johnny and Susie in a group, only Johnny and Susie can access this page and chat with each other. But they can make announcements to each other. They have a homepage just like you have a homepage on your Canvas course, so they would be able to leave notes for each other there. They can start their own discussions. Um, so they would be able to use this to communicate as well. And I suppose I'll just end the video with the fact that the reason we have gotten rid of the inbox is when students message each other on the inbox, it is not being monitored. So they can message something to somebody and say whatever they want. And then unfortunately, if it's not appropriate, we're relying on the person receiving that inappropriate message to tell someone, and that's not always happening. Um, and so we've, we've got some situations happening that we want to just kind of stop. If we set up a group discussion or we let students use groups here, then we as the teacher are able to monitor all the conversations being had by our students so that you know we can stop anything that is inappropriate ourselves and we're not relying on a victim to tell us that. Um, I will say one more thing. I'm going to go back into my course. I will say one thing. If you haven't ever done this, I want you to go down to settings. I want you to scroll down and say more options. And I want you to look at some of the settings for your discussions. So let students attach files to discussions. If you're okay with that, go ahead and check that. Let students create discussion topics. I would have that unchecked. I would not allow them to create their own discussions. Let students edit or delete their own discussion replies. That's up to you. If you want them to be able to edit or delete, you can have it checked. If you're worried that they will type something inappropriate and then delete it later before you've had a chance to see it, you can uncheck it and then every single thing they post is there. They can't get rid of it. So that one's up to you and how you trust your students. Maybe you have it checked going at first, you see that problems are happening and you come back here and you uncheck it. All right, if you are gonna let students manually um, sign up for groups, that's not what this is. This one is letting students organize their own groups, meaning you haven't created a group discussion, they're just gonna go in and make their own group. I would leave that unchecked, okay? All right, and then if you make any changes, make sure you say update course details. All right, you are ready now to create group discussions so that your students can still connect with each other outside of the classroom setting. Thanks.